What's going on everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in yet again. Fulton here bringing you another video album review. Today's album that we're going to be talking about is the new Opeth album, Pale Communion. Alright, well it's finally here after a little bit of a delay. Here at the end of August we're finally seeing the official hard copy release of Opeth's Pale Communion, the 11th full length record for the band, and the second installment of Opeth's More progressive rock, progressive metal direction. Eight tracks, 55 minutes from the get-go, just do the division. The songs are a little bit longer. Uh, we do have one instrumental on this album which falls in the center of the album this time around, whereas on Heritage we had two instrumentals, book ending, beginning and end of the album. So this is actually um, quite a little bit different. Uh, which means there's a lot more of a vocal approach to the album. And from the start, Michael wanted to do a little bit more melodic album, a little bit more vocal driven with a lot of melodies within there. And also create an album that sounded a little bit more darker and have a little bit more of a Dio Holy Diver kind of a sound to it. And he said in the interview that it didn't exactly come out there in the end, but there was good intentions there from the start. Uh, I could say that there's definitely a darker element to this album for sure, and I think a lot of people who weren't too crazy about Heritage might actually be driven more towards the darker element this time around. But let's get into the songs and talk about uh, how this overall album flows as a whole. Now, from listening to this album a handful of times before doing this review, it is obvious that once you listen to the album once, that much care was taken towards the overall flow of the album from start to finish. Although the album does not exactly start off that way, with Eternal Rains will come, it becomes obvious that the songs themselves don't exactly have an orthodox song structure or song arrangement. As soon as you start this album off, it's just knocking you right on your face with a jazz fusion keyboard and drum solo. But then once it starts to develop, we realize that this, this is an intro to an album. The songs themselves are very quirky and don't exactly have a common sense of direction, one that you'll easily be able to guess as it goes on. And of course some of the songs in the album are more simpler than others, but they seem to always have some sort of unorthodox twist to them. That's why I love aggressive rock so much is that nothing is very cut and dry. It's got a lot of uniqueness and a lot of eclectiveness to it. Um, but they're all performed with great execution on this album. It's it's, it's not something that when it gets more simple, the care is lost and it becomes lazy. It's, it's not the case here. With Eternal Rains Will Come, we have a lot of lush vocals and a lot of great fusion playing with the intro, and a lot of great solos towards the end. And it really just becomes a very great beginning to the album and what will follow. Songs like Moon Above, Sun Below, and River towards the end of the album really kind of show that more complex side to Opeth and the more um, new way of writing in a complex way where these left turns are happening left and right even if the songs are starting off simple like beginning of River starts off very acoustic and very pretty but then it just breaks off into this crazy solo section towards the uh, middle half with a song like Moon Above Sun Below it's just very small parts not exactly tied to each other in any way but Overall, when you hear the piece from start to finish, it, it makes sense. In fact, when I heard the album for the first time and I heard that song, and that operatic part in the center comes in with the instruments cut out and there's that layered vocal part, that, that was absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love that. Uh, and hearing an interview from Mike with Roadrunner Germany, he said that in one of the studios they recorded in had the piano that Freddie Mercury had and the ghost of Freddie Mercury and the spirit was supposedly supposed to be haunting the studio for a while, but um, he didn't really feel a presence, but I think musically, some sort of that Bohemian Rhapsody influence got in there with that track. Uh, it doesn't really sound like it at all, but just sort of some of the influence on the vocals and some of the arrangements and how strange and arbitrary they, they may be. But it all comes together wonderfully in the end. Definitely love that track and definitely a nice epic for this album to have. Uh, when it comes to songs like Cusp of Eternity and Goblin, these are songs that have very simple execution but do have uh, kind of a strange arrangement where something like Cusp of Eternity, it's more vocal verses and the choruses are kind of just oohs and ahs. Very strange how that song can be such a great song but with just three verses. But it, the catchiness and the 
amazingness of the song structure and, and this the cool sounds and the cool chords that that goes through it, it doesn't even matter you know whether there's a verse or not or a chorus or not that song is just great with a song like goblin the instrumental on the album it's more of variations on a theme uh, when it comes to like the main riff it just kind of builds and builds and builds towards the end where it becomes a little bit more of a whole band coming together and a little bit more of a fusion rock and kind of a old 70s progressive metal thing towards the end. Uh, very well done, love the way that they did this. Now getting towards the very end of the record, we have something that they've only kind of played with a handful of times and that's the use of real strings, but this time around the strings really kind of take the place of all the other instruments, especially the guitars in some of these cases. With Voice of Treason into Faith and Others, we have uh, two songs that really flow very nicely into one another. A lot of great tension, but a lot of great beauty as well in these songs. When I was reading the press release for it and reading some of the, the song comments, it was saying how beautiful the strings were in these tracks and really how emotionally gripping it made them. And I just made, it just made me want to hear this album so bad. It was like hearing that one comment, especially the comment about um, how gripping the strings were and that the closer of the album Faith and Others was one of Michael's uh, biggest masterpieces to date. Hearing that, uh, you know, it nearly brings a tear to the eye how beautiful it is. And, you know, I think I think those those words of high praise were giving it a lot of hype, but I think the hype was definitely worth it, praising the song to that level, because it is definitely a great way to end the album with how crazy this album opens with Eternal Rains Will Come and ending on such a slow, beautiful decline with Faith and Others. It, it's just, it almost like takes your heart out and it rips it out. It's, a, uh, it, it's, it, it's one of those songs where it, it's so soulful, where you just want to get in and start singing along with him. It, it's one of those songs where I feel that his cover, uh, Michael's cover that is, of Soldier of Fortune by Deep Purple was really one of the precursors to doing a song like this. That's why I love the deluxe edition of Ghost River so much. Hearing that Soldier of Fortune cover, I absolutely love his vocals on that. And a lot of that vocal influence, I think, kind of poured itself into a song like Faith and Others, where the vocals are definitely the center point, not much guitar. And really, the, the, the music itself, like with all the other instruments, is very subdued. But the strings, dear God, that is just the best thing about that track. Another great aspect about this album is that it has a very live sound to it. I'm not sure if the band was actually recorded live as one force on this album, because I know on Heritage, when you listen closely, especially to the 5.1 surround mix, that you realize that every instrument was recorded in its own little space, uh, which is very, very strange and kind of added a little bit of a different dimension with the sound of every instrument on that one. But this one, everything sounds a little bit more balanced. But um, at the end of uh, Voice of Treason, it really sounds like the band was recording that live just because of all the tempo increases. And it just sounded very much in the pocket on that. Um, whether or not they actually did that, I don't know. But even if the instruments were recorded one by one individually, that's some, that's some tight playing by everyone. So props to them on that one for playing that. And getting down to talking about the music and the overall sound of the album, the guitars are very clear, having a lot of great overdriven tones for the solos. In fact, some of the guitar tones on the solos are some of the best guitar tones I've heard on an Opeth record to date. The bass on this album, Martin Mendez, always has a nice low bass tone, adding a lot of lows and a lot of mids. Um, definitely a lot of great uh, playing from him. And you can even hear a lot of uh, percussive uh, thumping in the background in some of these. Uh, the keyboards, with uh, this being the first official release with uh, Joachim Svalberg on for the writing process, he added a lot of keyboard dimension. In fact, this album, I think, has more keyboards, more keyboard sounds than any other Opeth release uh, to this day. Now, a lot of moogs, a lot of piano, distorted organ is all over this, and I mean, if you love, like, what Per Wieberg did with the organ in Bang of the Hounds. That distorted organ that sticks blue color man kind of patch tone with like a lot of like deep purple influence mixed in. I mean this shit sounds thick. It is tight. It's growly. It's mean. Fixed with the guitars just perfectly well. Love what he did with this. Uh, Using Mellotron as well. Absolutely loved his playing on this record. The drums are just insane. We all know that Axe is an incredible drummer and 
is getting a little bit more tasteful with some of the, the drum patterns on this album as well. Heritage really gave him a lot of versatility and really kind of let out a lot of that jazz influence that he also has aside from blast beats and metal drumming. Um, really great versatility on this and really showcases his drumming abilities. Uh, no screaming on this album, once again, just like Heritage. But uh, Mike did showcase a lot of versatility and vocal range on this album this time around. As that was his mission statement from the beginning, he wanted to create a more vocal, dynamic album with a lot of melodic aspects to it. He's got a lot of lower register cleans, he's got a lot of falsettos this time around. And I think the Storm Corrosion album, um, especially his vocals on the last track doing that really high falsetto part, um, definitely made its way uh, the influence from that into this album too so great great vocal execution from Mike I think um, some of his best vocals to this date on this album actually and just the the way that Michael is always able to make this very evil subject matter and kind of the satanic lyrics it all comes together so beautiful in the end and as, as demonic as a song may be lyrically it still just sounds like an angelic angel hymn at the end of the day it just sounds so 180 to what it actually is about and um, that's one of the beauties of Opeth is that that back and forth yin and yang even if it's not so black and white it can definitely still be evil and yet uplifting at the same time so absolutely phenomenal music and musicianship on this album and the last thing that I wanted to talk about in this review was the overall mix and mastering of this album this album has a lot of direct punch from the acoustics the bass and the drums very much up front, just like how Michael wanted it originally to be like that Dio Holy Diver. A lot of that rhythm section right up front and not really in its own unique space like Heritage was. Um, where the guitars sound very, very bright. Although the overall tone and timbre of this album has a lot of murkiness to it, as if it was conceived in like a dungeon or something like that and even much of like the cover art kind of looks like it was painted on the wall of a dungeon right before you go down like the spiral staircase just to see Opeth sitting at the bottom of it writing and playing these songs at least that's kind of what I hear in my head I hear a lot of tunnel like reverb and a lot of air in in the production style of this and the mixing everything is just so densely layered and that reverb just kind of adds a nice room, a nice tunnel-like aspect to hear everything. Terrifically mastered though, and Mike was saying uh, recently, and it's something that I agree with a lot, and something that I talk about a lot on this channel in some of my reviews is that I hate overcooked mastering, and when you hear just this wall of white noise and this crackling mess when you hear a playback of a mastered record, loudness does not create good sounding music these days. I would much rather be able to turn up my own volume and, and make it as clear as I want it, uh, rather than hearing a wall of abrasive noise, you know, in place where a guitar riff should be. Um, the dynamics on this album were very much intact, and when you listen to this album with headphones, which I really do recommend, especially if you get the CD version, um, really c pay close attention to some of the, the, the really quiet parts, because there's a lot of beauty laced within this that you might not hear if you're... Um, if you're not paying attention. So definitely either crank this up loud or listen to this very closely with headphones on. Uh, Stephen Wilson laying down the mix again on this. And again, it, it's very similar to the way that his last couple albums were mixed and even the way that Heritage was mixed, but for a good reason. Uh, it definitely has a lot of good dynamics and a lot of beauty to be released when you crank up that volume instead of just getting a bunch of distorted crackles and stuff like that. You don't want that. You want to hear clarity, you want to hear distortion in this case. Uh, I give this album a very high score with a solid 92 out of 100. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Another great addition to the Opeth catalog. Uh, if you haven't heard this yet and you like my review, definitely check this out and give this band support. Please buy the physical product if you can. Thanks for checking out this review. If you like what you saw, please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Happy listening. Have a good one.